Hi, my name is Adrian, and I'm a paramedic. I've been a paramedic for about 15 years, and today I'd like to talk to you about the Todd and Amy Mullis case. Um, if you didn't know, Todd Mullis was convicted of the murder of his wife uh, based on forensic pathology. Um, that was inaccurate, and today I'd like to respectfully disagree with some of the points that were made by Dr. Cruz and give my own opinion about what happened in this case. So in paramedic school and then throughout my career, we're taught to look for mechanism of injury. Mechanism of injury is, is the first thing. What happened? How did it happen? How many patients do we have? You know, what kind of possible injuries are there from what happened? So when I saw this, I was painting my daughter's bedroom a couple of weeks ago and I heard it and I was intrigued. So I looked a little more into it and came across this, which is Dr. Cruz's testimony in his trial. And what she's saying about some of this seems horrifically inaccurate. So the first thing is she called these wounds on her hands. And this is a picture of um, Amy Mullis's hands. This is her right hand, and I'd like you to take a look right here in this area. See the uh, bruising on her knuckles and then on the back of her hand. I'm going to go to the other hand here. These could potentially. And again, right here and right here. Okay, this is the area I want you to, to really take a look at and pay attention to. Now, she, I'm going to go through this, and she has bruising on her knees. She has some mark. All right, so Miss Mullis had had uh, a minor surgery about a week before this happened, and she was probably taking Motrin um, to, uh, to control the pain. Motrin causes bruising, easy bruising. So this... These wounds that are on her knees could have just as easily been caused by her crawling on the floor on her knees, not necessarily being struck in the knees, but it could also be, you know, if she fell, passed out. Um, I'm going to go now to the image of her back where she was allegedly struck three times with the corn rake. Dr. Cruz says she was struck three times with the corn rake. Okay, first of all, these two wounds right here, I want you to take a look at them. They are more narrow in width. So this would be a first strike from the corn rake. The corn rake has four tines, but only three of them are in that row. So if he did strike her with the corn rake, he missed. And you're not going to miss. That's just any modicum of hand-eye coordination says that you're going to have this, you're going to hold the handle in the center of your body and come straight down with it wherever you're trying to strike. You're not going to miss. And so this was the second strike that they said. And the first strike is is a direct in direct line. So we hit the same hole twice. That's highly, highly improbable. But what I really want to address are these, which were not addressed and could not have come from the corn rake. But I want you to take a look at this wall up here. Look at those. They're from nails. Right? Something came out of the wall, made two holes. All right, come on back. Now, my theory of what happened that day is that she went, just like she said she was going to, to get the kennel. The kennel's on a shelf right here. And the reason I knew exactly what those defensive wounds were on her hands is because I've had those wounds myself. It's the wounds that, they, that Kelly Cruz labeled defensive. They weren't defensive. They came from the kennel. Kennels are knuckle busters. When a woman carries a kennel, she picks it up by its sides because it's easier for us to hold things here. But when she backed out, and it was a narrow um, hallway in this barn, she backed out, she pulled the kennel straight back out, and these two wounds were caused by um, nails that were in the wall, I believe. This was never ever addressed still. And so this this little scratch right here was probably also caused by that. So she, she tenses up, freaks out, and trips a little bit, slamming the kennel forward, scraping her knuckles, 
causing the bruising on her chest and her face. She's like, oh, forget this. They can get the kennel themselves. Stumbles out of there and that manages to knock over the corn rake and trips. Okay, so when you trip, you have protective reflexes. One of those protective reflexes is when you fall, you're gonna put your hands down because your, your hands and arms are sacrificable where your head and chest are not, right? So you put your hands out. So when she fell, the corn rake hit her directly. One, two, three, okay? The other one was sticking out of her side. She may or may not have passed out, but what I do know is she got up on her knees and she pulled that rake out. So this wound here and this wound here were, they did not enter the chest cavity. They only did minor damage to her, okay? And that was the other thing I'll talk, go back to that later. She reaches up, she pulls this tine out of her chest and doing that, caused, so we've got four right here. This one, this was already pulled out. It's not very deep, just very shallow injury. So this one was the only one left. And what happened was the corn rate rotated and she passes back out causing this one. Okay. So when Mr. M when, when Better their child life. comes in and finds the mom, he calls for, for, Todd Mullis to come in and he pulls the corn rake out. Now this was one of the, the, the biggest, you know, things that they hammered this poor guy on. Um, oh my gosh, you're never supposed to pull out an impaled object. But yes, yes you can. Yes you can. There are several situations where you can and you should pull out an impaled object. One of those times is if in something is in your cheek. There's no big blood vessels there, you can just go ahead and pull it out. The second time is if something interferes with your airway, breathing, or circulation. If you have to start CPR and that object that's in that person is interfering with that, pull it out. So had Todd Mullis called 911, waited for the paramedics, and I rolled up on scene, I would have went, huh, neat trick, pulled out the corn rake and started CPR. Okay, but that's not what Mr. Mullis did. He instead instructed his son to go get the truck and he started driving her to the hospital. He hammered this on, on him as well. Why didn't you call 911 right away? Why didn't you wait on it? This is very common. I cannot tell you how many times I have been working. Uh-oh, it's okay, I don't need any more. I can't tell you how many times I've been working in an emergency room in triage and somebody comes in that should have called the ambulance. Okay, I've seen gunshot wounds. I've seen a guy with two broken legs, right? He was he was working on his angle iron with his angle iron, the angle iron popped off, he it ricocheted and broke both of his ankles. Instead of calling 911, he gets up and he drives himself to the hospital. I've had Marines with dislocated elbows, I've got guys with snake bites bringing the copperhead in with them. All of these people are just in the mode to, oh my God, I have to get to the hospital not what's the best way to get to the hospital. And in that situation, all that adrenaline pumping, I have no doubt that he was thinking, I gotta get her there, I gotta get her there, I gotta get her there fast, but wasn't thinking about how. It's super common. So, there's the reasons I believe that Mr. Mullis is 100% innocent of the crime of murder because there was no murder. This was absolutely 100% an accident. And another thing I wanted to say about the the wounds, I, I have to go back a little bit. I apologize, and I also apologize for that radio going off back there. But Mr. Mullis was a big man, six foot two, probably I don't know, 280 pounds, and his solid muscle. He's a farmer, right? If he hit her, all four of those times would have went in. All four of those times would have went all the way through. I have no doubt in my mind, no doubt whatsoever, that this was an accident. Thank you.